Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing more information security. Um, so yeah, we're going to understand bcrypt hashes. So for the following challenges, you will be working with a new starter project that is different from the previous run. Okay, this is important. I actually did this in the existing one that we've been working on for the last few lessons, and that was just not right. So what we're going to do now is um, create one from a new repository. So we've got our render open, but we can close this old infosec free code camp thing. And it looks like um, we'll close our local host as well. And so what we can do is uh, clone from GitHub. So this will be a good opportunity to, for us to practice uh, cloning. So um, Visual Studio Code was for a different project. So I'm going to close that now. And then we'll start with uh, Command Spacebar. And then we'll open up the terminal. I'll have the terminal on this side. And on this side, I will have this. So we're going to go to code and get the um, copy that. Uh, change directories onto the desktop. That's where we store these things. And then we're going to go get clone. And then this should open up. So we're going to change directories into the boilerplate for bcrypt. Um, and then PWD will see, or LS will see the uh, code that's in here. And so what we can do is open that up with Visual Studio Code. And we can close the uh, terminal. Because we won't need that anymore because Visual Studio Code has, if we press Command J, a... Um, integrated terminal. And so we can close this for now and we'll go back over to the information. Um, let's see, bcrypt hashes are very secure. A hash is basically a fingerprint of the original data and is always unique. <clears throat> this is accomplished by feeding the original data into an algorithm and returning a fixed length result. To further complicate the process and make it more secure, you can also salt your hash. Salting your hash involves adding random data to the original data before the hashing process, which makes it even harder to crack the hash. Bcrypt hashes will always look like this. And so there's a long string. So it has, it does have a structure. The first small bit of data, so this is money sign 2a, is defining the kind of hash algorithm was used. The next portion, hash 13, defines the cost. The cost is about how much power it takes to compute the hash. It is a logarithmic scale of two squared cost, logarithmic. I believe logarithmic goes up fast and then it levels out. Yeah, logarithmic, okay. Um, cost is about how much power it takes to compute the hash. If an algorithm, if a logarithmic scale of two up cost determines how many times the data is put through the hashing algorithm. For example, at a cost of 10, you are able to hash 10 passwords a second for an average computer. However, at a cost of 15, it takes 3 seconds per hash. And to take it further, at a cost of 31, it would take multiple days to complete a hash. A cost of 12 is considered very secure at this time. The last portion of your hash, so I think when it says the last, oh, yeah, money sign from here. So the last portion of the hash, all the way this guy, looks like one large string of numbers, periods, and letters, but it actually two separate pieces of information. The first 22 characters is the salt in plain text, and the rest is the hash password. So add all your code for these lessons in server.js file between the code um, we have started you off with. Do not change or delete the code we have added. Okay, so let's take this over to the side. Um, bcrypt has already been installed, so let's check to make sure that that's real. Do we see bcrypt in the dependencies? There we go, bcrypt 5. All right, um, it's already been installed, so require bcrypt in your server. So, I mean, we don't have my server this time, so all we have is this guy. Uh, I can just minimize this so it's easier to read. And it looks like this is where we're going to be doing all our work, because this is sort of free code camp stuff. So, yeah, um, const bcrypt. And then we'll just keep the uh, spacing the way that they've been doing it. Um, require bcrypt. And we'll throw a semicolon in here. Nice. Okay. So has already been set it as a dependency. So require bcrypt in your server. Submit your page when you're ready. Well, we don't have that. So we're going to have to work on that. So git status. There's no git here, right? Uh, git diff. That's all. It's just going to show that we added bcrypt. And so now we're going to want to go back over to our GitHub repository and create a new repository. Um, I'm just going to select myself as this one. So this one is uh, free 
code camp bcrypt. And in here it's going to be useful programmer going bcrypt section of, of the info sec security tutorial on free code command. All right, so we can add, no, let's not add a readme. We just want to create the repository. Okay, so now we've got a new repository and we can say we're going to push this existing one. So um, I think right now, get status says, okay, we've got one. So we can add the remote. No such file or directory. We did this last time. Remove the remote. So get status. Let's go git add. So we add the server JS that change. Git commit dash m uh, require bcrypt. And git push. It's going to say you can't make repositories there. So let me, I forgot how to do that. How to change git remote uh, destination. Run git remote set URL add. How to change the remote? There we go. Cool. So we're going to go git remote set URL origin. And then we're going to set that to this guy. So now we go git remote dash v and now it's changed and so if i did that previously it would have been there and so now i think we can change it uh, get branch main let's see if we go get push okay we've pushed that there uh, let's refresh see if it showed up here nice and just to make double sure i'm just going to open up the readme um this is the tutorial built as part of useful programmer going through the info uh, certification. Cool. So now if we go get uh, diff, we're going to see that there's a change to the remote. So we're going to say get at, get commit. We're going to commit the changes, update readme. And then we can push that, and then we should see that here. If we refresh this page, there we go. So now we're committing changes. We see that we're deployed to Git, and that will bring us back to render. And so now what we need to do is deploy this as a render event. So let's see if we can add a new one. Web service, if I can remember correctly. Yeah. So now connect a repository. Now we've got our free code camp. It just, that linked us to the thing. So we want to connect to this and close that. Um, bcrypt free code camp tutorial useful programmer and then we want to be in Oregon that's fine branches main is fine root directory nothing node yarn and then start command this is the important part um, npm uh, npm start all right and we're going to do free and we'll create the web service And so currently, we don't even have anything to deploy. So we're just going to have to wait on that. I'm going to close these guys. We want to just remember what logarithms are. So yeah, generating con container image from the build. This may take a few minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to stand by. We'll fast forward this part. Okay, and we're back. And so it appears that we have deployed this um, application. And it doesn't actually show that. So it says that it started it. It built too slow. Manual deploy. Bcrypt free code camp tutorial unrendered. Huh. It doesn't show any errors. Let's see if we can run it. NPM start. We can run it locally. Huh. It says that there's nothing going on there. Let's see if we have logs in here. Shell events. Logs. There we go. Well, we're not getting any errors. It seems to be running. So let's see, um, if we go npm i, 
That will install the dependencies. So that's my guess as to why it's not running locally. npm start. And it looks like this running the way that it's running there. And if we go to localhost, we do git and cannot git. Okay. Now it's possible that there's just no git as part of this application. So what we want to, what I'm going to do is just take this and just paste it into here to see if it works. Okay, so that was kind of a weird one. Yeah, even though there's nothing to display and it looks like your application is a um, a failure in the production environment, it's just that there's no git here. So it would be helpful to have something like um, you know git. Wait a second. Yeah. App dot get, and then we just set a root URL, and we just said, uh, "Hello world." If we were to do that, would that change it? Do you have to reset the server in Node? No, it doesn't like that. Requires a callback function. Got a string. Uh, express simple get request. Hello world, Express JS. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I forgot about this. You need to make it. Um, set this over here. Set this over here. Um, yeah, request response, and then we pass it in a callback function, and then we go res dot send. Uh, hello, world. So now if we save that and go back to our local environment, oh, we need to start the server again. And now we see hello world. And so, I don't know, it seems to me that it would be good to just have servers that um, run on this. Um, so npm or git add, git commit, add simple hello world git request and get push and if we push this up to the server then our deployed server will work but at this point it doesn't really matter because we still have passed the requirements for this um, encryption is something that's not really doesn't need a graphic user interface so i can see why that would not be required but yeah in the next video we'll do hash and compare passwords asynchronously see you in the next